Today we're going to cover the gradient tool in Affinity Photo. Um, the first place we're going to start is in the uh, Develop Persona. Um, the image we got in front of us, um, quite bright at the back, uh, in the sky, uh, uh, but the, the front is uh, absolutely fine. So ideally what we can do is add a, a gradient onto this to control the brightness. So first of all I'm going to turn on my um, clipped view and we can see here that this is just overly bright. Now if I adjust the exposure and bring that down I can recover that information but it does make the rest of the scene quite dark and we don't really want that so I'm going to return that to where to the original setting but what we can do is add a gradient over this area so I can go to overlays and I can pick the gradient tool here. What I can do is from the top, which is the darkest part of the gradient, drag down <coughs> until I've covered the areas that uh, are overly bright. And I can go back to the basic tab and I can adjust the exposure and the brightness, etc., to get the. Um, now it's pink at the moment to show you what areas are covered. Now, what I can do is, as soon as I move this, that will disappear. And as I bring the brightness down, you can see the sky darkening and removing these extra uh, blown out areas. I can also adjust the brightness or come down to shadows and highlights and I could reduce the highlights so I can use several techniques to to reduce that but uh, I'm not going to change that I'm going to go back um, that's perfectly fine but uh, I want the photo in its original um, settings and I'll just go straight in develop the photo and use the normal editing tools the gradient tool in, in uh, photo is uh, much more versatile. Now we normally don't want to work on the uh, background directly. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new fill layer. Uh, you want this white. If it's not already white, just click on this swatch. And you can pick any colour, but white is what we want to work with. Now we've got this fill layer and I can add a gradient and I'll just pull down and we've got a very basic gradient there that we've got going from white to a light grey. Now we'll change this just so that you can see what's happening. I'll click on the swatch and I'll start with the white, click on that and I'll pick a different colour. And I can go to the other end and pick a colour for that end. There we go. So basically we've got a gradient and the way it's working is from this top point here, anything above is the pure green colour. From the bottom one, we've picked a blue and that's uh, the full blue. In between, you're getting a grad gradual change from blue to green. And what we can do is, if I move a handle, I can move that down and you can see the uh, gradient increase in width. Or I can bring it right down and you can see a, a quicker change just within this area here. Now I'll just move that back up. What you can also do is change the position, which is a little slider. So if I pull it down, you get the greens. If I pull it up, I'll get more blues. Now what I can also do within a gradient is I can basically double click anywhere along this range. I'll double click here. And I can change, pick yet another colour. There we go. And now I've got three colours. And you can keep doing this so you can get a a full rainbow effect. So I can move, say, the red into the middle. 
I can change the blend position between those two and I can change the blend position here. You can also move the handles around and invert it or you can use um, this reverse gradient you can just quickly change the direction of the gradient and you can quickly flip it round. So that's the basics of uh, setting up a gradient and what I'll do is I'll go back in here if I click on that middle one I can actually delete it or copy it so I'll just hit delete and I'll just go back to standard gradient and for a uh, say reducing the, the uh, brightness in a sky you would typically on the top gradient have a dark black for instance and on the opposite end you would go to a white. What you can also do is change the opacity so for instance on this one here if I change the opacity on the bottom you can start seeing the picture come through. Now what you'd uh, probably do here in most cases is you would actually pick um, a blend mode. So with this um, gradient overlay you would generally pick a, a darken uh, method. You can obviously, there's all sorts of gradients here, uh, there's all sorts of um, blend modes but on the whole uh, let's just start with a multiply now obviously that's much too heavy so I can come on to opacity and just reduce that um, opacity until I've got something that I, I quite like now we've picked um, black here just to darken but what, uh, what's really nice is I can go into the colour and instead of picking um, a black, I can just pick any colour I like. So I could pick a colour somewhere closer to the, the original sun if I just turn that off for a moment. There we go. So we've got some golden colour here. So what I can do is come into the colour and actually pick up the paint dropper. And if I pick that up and come over, I could actually pick one of the colours in the sky here. So let's go for round about here. Click on, click on the icon and it adjusts the colour there. Okay. So I can now move that around and you can see see the effect. If I, if I move it more horizontally, it looks like the light's coming in from this direction. And the sky over here is uh, original colour because it's moving to transparency. So really you can change the effect. So it's much heavier over here and a lighter, lighter colour here. And I can move this up and down to how far I want it to go into the scene so I quite like it I want to take it down into this area here and I think that's quite nice so that's one use of uh, a gradient tool um, but it can can be used as a mask as well so I'll use this as an example I'll go to the background again and what I'll do is I'll add um, Gaussian blur to the front of the image to the foreground so I pick a Gaussian and of course this is going to affect everything so let's just pull it up to about that level this is what I'm really interested in okay now every um, effect you have there automatically has a mask so if I draw a gradient on the mask and just pick up the gradient tool and come from this point here upwards so 
normal normal rules for a gradient if you color something black you can it the effects taken away so if I take that end and make that black you'll see the effect is completely gone and if I go to the opposite end it's already white so that's good and the effect you can see the effect here and if I take this up we anything below this point has the full um, Gaussian blur but it does mean I can feather it into the into the scene and I can take this point up say to the tree bottom of the tree line there and again I can adjust how far into the water we want the Gaussian blur to go and it's um, yeah I think that's quite nice so if we look over here you can see the uh, mask if I if I go edit the filter there's our gradient so everything up here the effects being taken away and it's gradually um, the Gaussian blur is gradually added fully added here okay so let's just have uh, a final tweak here um, let me just increase uh, I think I quite like that let's just go down see if there are any better um, options here um, I quite like the linear burn let's just try that uh, another one to try is probably screen that's too washed out Uh, overlay. No, I think we'll stick with the uh, the linear. And again, you can adjust how much how much effect you want that to have. And if I pull that around, I'm affecting the foreground here a little bit. And pull that round, and, and it will darken that area as well. So there you go, that's how you can use gradients both for uh, filtering out uh, overly bright areas or in fact introducing colour or creating a gradient on any other effect such as Gaussian, blur, might be brightness, um, you can do all of those. Thank you.